hello hello okay roman blind return flaps or integral returns continuous returns whatever you want to call them these on the end to cover up the end of the head rail so if you fix into the outside of a recess um, you can cover up the head rail well it's a treat um, a lot of people for a while now have been doing the oblong little extra pieces sewn on the end um, but I was never quite happy with them because there was always a seam here um, if they were pattern matched they always looked a bit better on a pattern fabric on obviously on plain not necessary uh, but you could really see the seam then um, and I also didn't quite like the boxy shape at the bottom um, this bottom corner would often flick out and they wouldn't sit very flat very well back to the wall so I came up with this method um, this is my first sample and I actually chose to line it just in the same lining fabric I'll just pull this down a bit then you can see a bit better So you can see there, there's a separate piece of lining there and this lining for your normal Roman blind lining is just the same as you would do normally, you make it up exactly the same and sew it on just the same as you would normally. Um, and it, it worked well with the heavy embroidered one that I did. Um, so I sort of stuck to it for the next couple but then I quite fancied the idea <laughs> of lining it in It's the same fabric. So where I cut, I did, and I came up with another method. Now with the lining method and l lining it in itself, there are two ways of sewing it. <clears throat> There's a hand sewn way, where you can leave it all completely on the table, not move it, which is great for really big blinds or quite unstable fabrics where things shift about quite a lot. Um, and you've got a bit more control, you know, and you're not having to heave fabric over to the machine just to sew this little bit around the lining or the, whatever it is you're doing. Um, that is the machined side I think, yeah. That's the machined side, so you can see it's machined around there and then just that little bit there is hand sewn although since then again I've found a method to machine that as well. It's a bit awkward because you've got to turn the both fabrics at a funny angle but we'll come to that. Um, and then this side is a hand sewn side so it's to be honest not that much different you can just sew little hand stitches around here and then carry on down there and just again sew the lining on just the same as you would normally um, I also originally only put a little piece of velcro on up to there and it would work but occasionally again on sort of heavier fabrics it would flick out a bit it would never sit quite right you can just see it would come kick out at a bit of an angle like that so I added this little tab at the back just to hold it really firm actually I'm not put that on very well the end caps come off like that and I also started with just a single layer of fusible buckram in the end but it it was still a little bit floppy so I've doubled up on that I've bonded two pieces together so it's a bit more stable um, so after that so that's the using standard lining in the ends but then after that I came up with a method to line it in itself now it's hard to see on this one because <laughs> it happens to be a pattern but there there's a join if I turn it back you'll see it's a machine join um, and then pressed open and this is one continuous piece of fabric cut about round here folded right over this bit has to, but it has to be split here just to get this side in so there we go I'll show you how to do this method uh, and I'll talk you through how to do the lining method at the same time because it's obviously very similar this one actually is all machined, so all machined round here, that's folded anyway, but the last little bit is machined and then down there. Okay, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so a word on the headrail first of all and on the size. 
what you want to achieve obviously is for this to go right back to the wall so you need to allow for the bracket depth as well this little space here so if you measure just take this off and see if it's clearer from the back of the headrail to the front of the headrail is 40 mil overall right to the front of the velcro don't need to worry about this little bit because it tends to sort of stay behind the, this top of the blind anyway just underneath the velcro and at the ends there's a good thickness of obviously the fabric itself the buckram inside and the velcro so really that's another five mil there at the end so whatever finished with you want your blind to be make the head rail five mil shorter at each end so 10 mil shorter altogether uh, the bits you'll need this is my piece of buckram and it's just normal standard fusible buckram but i've double layered it and then just ironed it and bonded it together so it's a quite a, a, a stiff piece of buckram now and then a couple of templates this one is for when you are lining uh, the flap with the same with the fabric so self lining it this one's for the buckram anyway you'll need a half piece to cut the shape of the book but also you can use that one if you're just uh, lining it now this is the extra on the width that you'll need this is the finished size of the blind so the finished top edge and the finished side of your blind I've just drawn on if you were to do just this with standard lining obviously you'll only need that much extra plus a bit of makings so it's 60 cent uh, 60 millimeters i've done that on the other side actually and i'll come to that in a bit but if you um want to line it in itself you need this strange looking template plus the makings that you would normally allow here at the normal side of your blind to turn because obviously that's got to go all the way across to match in line with the turn in here now i allow 30 mil on the side of my blinds in general sometimes it varies but in general it's about 30 mil and that's what i've used here so the first job is to mark your fabric now if you once you get used to it you probably skip a few of these stages but so you know where you are for a while probably as well to do this so i'll just mark this out and the the bottom of the points are important so you might want to try and mark those if you can't mark your fabric for whatever reason put a little pin in stitch something just to, so you know where that point is hopefully this will show up enough for you to see And again there, just try and make that clear. So hopefully you can see that on the camera. Okay, so that's your starting point. You also want to mark your normal seam allowance on the side. So like I said, I always, your hem allowance, sorry, I would always allow 30 mil. So let's just draw that in. A lot of this is just so you don't cut it off again. <laughs> it's quite critical where this these bits get cut. And then just draw in your seam allowance as well. Come down to here and leave a good amount here to work with so you can draw this down at an angle. So that will be enough like that. and chop that off so now you've got your template basically and i'll sort of mock it up so you can see that would be folding there to create your flap so this turning would be coming in here and obviously you've got to cut in here and that gets quite critical where you cut so just a word on these templates on the measurements that i've got on here the length of it 
actually can vary and it depends on the look that you want, on the fabric that you've got, the depth of the blind, the length of the blind and what will look in proportion but just be careful you don't make this too long because what it has a tendency to do is once this is in place it holds the blind here so if you've got lots of folds coming up here and you've a lot more fabric than this it tends to obviously fill up this space and bunch and it tends to push the fabric out here but hold this bit flat a bit like a pelmet and if that's too long it starts to look a bit strange so really want to do the minimum that looks okay and this one is 85 mil i actually started off doing it a little bit less i started doing it 72 mil um, but it was just a just a little bit too short so you want this template now just to cut the buckram and just find a good edge and draw around it. Now, if we were to just put that in exactly to the line that you've drawn, dead up to the lines there and there, fold that back and then try and fold it. I'll try and show you it tends to push back here. This bit of buckram pushes away and pushes back. It tends to make the blind kick in a little bit. So you want to give it a bit of room, basically. So it seems brutal, but we're going to chop some of that off again. Now, it depends on the thickness of the fab fabric, and I've done anything up to 5 mil. In fact, a tad more than that. But at the moment, I'll do just probably about 3 mil for this one. And that's why it's important that you know where this point is at the bottom here because you've just turned a little bit off there but still mark it line it up with the top just the same and line it up with the shape but leave it short here and it'll create more of a hinge a softer hinge so that it folds back more easily and doesn't want to kick away again from the end of the blind okay now just to hold that in place just temporarily I'll just use the tip of the iron and do like a little tack it's just enough so that you can hold it when you turn it over and you know it's in exactly the right place and then turn it over choose a bit of lining just flop this bit over and press it on the right side. You can even use another piece of fabric on top here. This is a pile of fabric so it may well show. There you go, it's created a bit of a shadow but it's piled so I'll just give it a brush while it's still hot. There we are, so it's more than truly stuck there. Okay so now to sew this there's two ways. You can either machine it by folding this back machine it down here or you can leave it on the table if you want if you're a bit chary about moving it over to the machine unnecessarily sometimes um, you can snip into here and then cut this dead straight across well, actually to that point there that you made which is there you want to cut straight across there leaving it a couple of mil short because you need something to turn and depending on the fabric again you'll be able to push that over and and then curve this back from there what i'll do is i'll do the other side with the line and i'll do that this method but for this side we're going to do the machining which is quicker and is a nicer finish if you can get used to doing it okay so you want to fold that back don't fold it right back like that so you can't see the buckram just leave a little mill or so showing and again that'll just give a bit of 
room for the fabric to come around, just the thickness of the fabric. And then stick a pin in it just to hold it. Yeah. And what you want to do is so right from the top here, as close to this buckram as you can, but then coming away from the edge of the buckram by a couple of mil, all the way around, all the way around and down to there, still a couple of mil away from there at the side. Because when you turn that, you can roll it back from the edge of the buckram so that it, the stitch line doesn't show right on the edge. Because they've got all the edges that you can see, it's that one. Okay, I'll go and sew this. I can't show you, unfortunately, because of where my machine is, but you'll be able to obviously see where I've stitched it, so. Okay, so. You can see there that the stitch line starts quite close to the buckram up there, but then comes away by a couple of mil all the way around there and then stops on the line but a couple of mil away from this line which is the side of your blind. Now the next bit is a bit tricky. Because you're going to cut it. So the first cut is just the top layer. Don't snip this at the back here. So keep that back with your finger and cut straight across to the stitch line and obviously it's you're still stopping short by a few mil there okay but you've still got this at the back still in one piece and then you can safely then trim this excess off stopping with the back bit there so you can see at the back that's still got this long bit on it. And then just snip out some nicks on the outside curve. So lose a bit of thickness. And then just snip up to the line around there. You might need to do a good few to get a nicer curve. And then the best bit and the most satisfying bit is to turn it. So hold it down with your fingers and pull that round. And then what you want to do is pull this, just manipulate it with your fingers. I've stitched it with white thread, you can see a little bit there, but obviously you use something that matches the fabric. And then push this seam. So it's not right on the edge, it's just round the back. Here's my nail varnish, I could at least have uh, touched that up, couldn't I? And then there as well and then that comes in you can see that come into play then why you've left it a bit short there and you'll be folding it on your line that you made earlier on and get a nice curve down so at this point you can turn your side pin it or press it if you like to press it then do otherwise just pin it or crease it and then you want to press that down. So starting at the bottom, sort of push with your iron and push back. So that it's welded to the buckram like that. At the top there's another little trick. <coughs> You want to bring this in a bit and again depending on the fabric whether you can or not just give it a little kick in rather than just take that parallel up to the top bring it in as much as you can really but i'd say by five mil if you can 
not the end of the world if you can't do this by the way but it's just a nice you'll see when we come to put the finish the head in how it works and then just ease the fabric press it like that looks a bit weird but come and see why okay now this bit <coughs> is the tricky bit now you can if you want just hand sew it turn it get a nice angle down hand sew across there simple as and that's fine But you've got three layers of fabric there rather than doing a machined seam <clears throat> and open the seam out. Okay, so what we'll do, I'll machine this now. So what I'll do is now I've got my shape right. I'll run a pin through this, I won't just jab it straight through, I'm going to run it as if I'm stitching it, then I can open it out of the machine. So just through the edge, and obviously just through this layer, not through the front layer as well. And I do as much as you can because the more you've got, the better a line you have to follow. Okay, so now I can go to the machine, I can open that out. And have a line to follow you could even draw that if you wanted to now you can still see the little mark you've left to denote the bottom of the point so you want to go from there straight across so i'll go and do that so there's the stitch line Where would you prefer to? so that's what we were looking at before and i've opened it out up to the machine and sewn it there so you can trim that off make it quite narrow the only problem with this that i find is if the fabric's quite thin not a problem if you're interlining it but if you're just lining it as standard or using bonded lining that doesn't go right up to the edge this line may show obviously but it's right at the top of the blind and it's just a bit below um, the flap basically and if you fix into the outside of the wind window anyway chances are it's going to be above the height of the window anyway so the chances of the light showing through that are quite minimal anyway there we go I've snipped that off and I shall just press that open as well There's a temptation to snip this little bit off here, but I would leave it if I were you because you're getting very close to the edge of the fabric and it may well split. Uh, so folding that back down, down like that, then you've got, I managed to get a stitch. Stitch. lay all that flat and with your ruler just tidy up that edge and the beauty of doing it this way is as well as having a neater finish here you've got a continuation of the fabric behind as well so you've got that consistency of thickness and again if the light comes through at least you've got that shadow line the same as you have here so there we go so that's method one and that's probably the method i use the most now it just seems the nicest neatest and then on the front it's you've just got the edge of the fabric showing you've not really got any seam showing because it's curled around the back here it's much nicer 
Okay, now to do the heading, I'll do that in a minute when I've done the other side. I'll show you the other side now without turning the fabric. I'll do a line in one so you can see how it's done. And obviously you can do you can do this other side um, with lining or again with the same fabric. The reason you may want to do that as a separate piece is it actually takes up quite a lot of fabric. The extra fabric that you need to allow to do it this way is 135 mil. That's quite a lot. So if you find that you're you're right up to a, you know the width of a fabric, and you just can't quite get that extra bit in. Do it the single way, and with a separate lining. I'll do the other side now. Okay, so this side we're going to do just lined, either lined in itself or lined in lining. I'll do this one lined in lining, then you can see the difference. So again, you'll need your template. You don't need the double one this time because you're only doing a single flap with the fabric uh, and more buckram, obviously. Um, so I shall draw on here first. That's my 85 mil mark there. So up to the line, use the full template size. Don't allow it, make any allowances. And again, mark this bottom edge as best you can, even with a pen if you need to. So again, draw in your seam allowance now. Your hem allowance, sorry, I keep saying seam allowance. And again, for me, it's 30 mil. And then draw in your makings. Okay, so this time we can cut straight across here again, not having to worry about this fabric here or the one at the back. So straight across to the line, leaving it a couple of mil from the line itself, just to, and you'll be able to ease that. You can always snip it a bit further if you feel you need to. And you can actually trim off that excess as well now. And then Make your buckram end. Look like I'm doing a Romo promo here. It's a Romo pencil and that's Romo Lenara. No, I'm not, but it's nice stuff. Okay, and then same again, trim off this inside edge and I'll do the same about three mil. And then line that up with the curve at the bottom from the edge and just leave it short. There, I'll just tap that in with the iron. Okay, let's just hold that off this time. So you need a piece of lining ready that will be wide enough so the same seam allowance there but also wide enough that it comes into the blind the same distance as your side turn so that it will line up and obviously plenty long enough here that you've got some to taper down. And then the next bit is to snip this because you're going to turn it and press it now rather than machine it. So snip up to, here's my little snips, up to but still a couple of mil away. It's better to put more cuts further away than to a few that'll go right into the curve and then you need to cut this out 
make some notches so you can lose some of the bulk. Do it all up there. Okay, so we're going to press this now. What you want to do is push up with your fingers like that. <clears throat> press it to the buckram. So the more you push the better the edge will be. And again at the top here just bring that in, kick that in a bit. And just turn your side hem now and then you can get that line so finding your line underneath following that up and then just easing the curve round. Like so. And you'll get a smoother curve. You might even want to put another snip in there. I wish I'd put one in there now. I might do actually. Just to lose that slight squareness. Yeah, a bit, a bit rounder now. And then it's sort of obvious what happens next is you put a piece of lining on. I always take my linings right to the top and then I, I tend to trim it down again. I tend to cut the lining off at the top edge of the blind and then turn uh, my top down with the Velcro on. So for now, line it up with the top. Make sure you've got some seam allowance. And then it's plenty long enough here. And iron that on. See that annoys me. I'll have to, I'll have to get rid of that. It's tempting to trim this back, but actually, the more you leave, the better. The stronger the um, the stitch line will be. And then you want to snip away now. You can do it from this side because you can see it, but if you're a bit wary of it, you can turn it over. Just don't cut this bit yet. You can leave that right to the end. So if you want to just come up like that, do quite a small allowance because you're turning it back a bit further than you would the face fabric and then snip. Uh, I tend to sort of create a, a crease in my thumbnail just so I can see where I am. I'm not going too far. And then snip in and you can go pretty much up to the fabric edge because you're going you're rolling the lining edge back a bit further. Okay, and then you just want to turn this back. Just working it with your fingers. Don't go too far up because then you'll start to reveal the snips you made in the face fabric. But you want it far enough back that it doesn't show from the front. So I'd say just a couple of mil. And then just keep sort of working it with your fingers until you get a nice-ish shape. You may wonder actually if you could do this as an integral part of the lining as well. So do the whole of the lining 
with your rub pockets on and then make this shape included. And you can do, you can even machine it part on, but it gets very complicated that way. And you can do, so it's best to do it just all hand sewn like this method if you are going to do it. The only problem with it is you don't have anything behind here. So you've not got any continuation of this line and you've, you've lost some consistency in the thickness and everything. So again, if it's an interline blind or a thick fabric, you can perhaps get away with it. It might be a nicer finish, but I've never really had the chance to do it yet. I've not really had the right fabrics. Right situation. There we go. Try to put too much of a crease in this bit because we're going to come back to that in a minute. And if you've got a bit of a choppy edge, you can smooth that out a bit actually when you sew it with use a pull and push with your needle. Sorry, I forgot a bit first, is to finish this off, obviously. So just turn this, just turn the lining inside. You don't come too far because you've got this snip quite close, so you want to sort of cut that corner and then come down at an angle across. Like that. If you want to cut this off inside you can do but quite frankly it's not great no great shapes to leave it in there you're going to cut this off anyway and i try and do really small stitches not so much on this bit but on the curve because you've got those snips in the fabric you need to hold them very well You don't need to sew beyond the buckram top unless you turn the lining down as well when you do your heading. But I don't, so I'm going to stop just short of it so I don't cut through the stitches. And um, same as the other side. Just going to press that into that bubble. And same as the other side, just bring that line up to the top. there we go so you've got both sides done now one with the lining one with self fabric machined on with a machined join just one more thing before i put the lining on um, if you're into lining obviously do it just the same way as you would normally except you want to cut your interlining to this shape as well and put it between the buckram and the face fabric sort of pretty obvious but you might wonder whether you should put it behind but to me it wants to be on the face there you'll have a bit of movement going on obviously because you've not got this bonded 
that bonded bit here with the fabric to the buckram you'll have the interlining in between but you could perhaps use some uh, little stay stitches inside just to hold it together but you'll have it obviously stuck to the interlining in this side and you can still machine it but just do all this just the same okay so let's assume this lining has rod pockets in which it doesn't but for speed I can show you so you would line it line it up just the same way as you would normally okay and then hand sew up the sides keeping these turned or sort of towed in top bits if you can but I'm only going to sew up to the top of my buckram okay so the top I'll turn it round because I cut my lining off I want to I've got two different ends here, but I'm just going to mark that. Take the line in to the very top of the buckram. So there we go. I've cut the line in down to from the top, and you can see your original line there. Um, and then I just double turn this down. May have a slightly different way of doing it, but I bring my lining down like that, and you'll see that it's short from the end there. That will come into play in a minute. I'm going to turn it again. So I'm going to turn this, put the velcro on this flap, and hand sew it down. And this was the marvellous Mary Grice's method. So thank you, Mary. I can't believe we used to machine sew velcro straight across <laughs> on bespoke lines. Still do on uh, contract stuff, but on a lovely made to measure bespoke blind, you don't want that machine line. And then the velcro goes on in two pieces. So you want a piece. For the end here with a little flap sticking out not critical how long it is that's what about 50 mil maybe a bit less and then it wants to go to the end of the buckram so leaving that little gap again so the buckram lines there so i would cut it just there perhaps even just a tad less So that it's like that. All good doing things upside down, anyway. And then leave a gap. So you want to, that's your due book from there. You want a gap about so much. Not that critical to be honest, you could leave a biggish gap and it won't matter. So there we go. And you'll see just a couple of things, a couple more details really. Um, I've sewn straight across the gap because that helps to keep the fabric together and hinge properly, it stops it gaping at the back. And also I've stopped short from the end of the blind by about five or six mil. And I've stitched across the end there and that helps to keep when it's back like that because you've got this extra bit going back to the wall to allow for the bracket that bit can run smooth across the back of the head rail okay so now just to sew the top up and this is where this little angle comes into play where it's angled like that if you bring it to the end level 
you'll see it pull like that but what happens if, if you stretch that out and ease it a little bit so that this center part is straight in fact if you pin it first I'll probably show it a bit better okay so there we can see it angled away and if we bring it to the corner stick a pin in it you'll see that it already starts to curl this end back it creates a bit more of a hinge take some of this bulk away again because there's quite a thickness there and some fabrics will be even thicker but when you bend it like that you can sometimes get a bit of a tuck that interferes with that nice hinge okay and then all you do is sew that up and I sew right across the end as well just to hold all the fabrics together keeps everything really firm I'm doing it in cream thread but obviously you choose something a bit better and if you can catch a bit of the buckram then do it just again it helps to keep everything close together so I'm just going to try and push through the buckram there and use the table Do another one here if I can. The edge. Obviously not stitching through to the front. And then I want to create that little bit of ease there, so a bit of a gap. Okay, so it's all sewn up. And the final thing that I tend to do is to just turn this over and make sure I've got a, a, a straight continuation in the fold in the right place, like so. And just give it a squish down so that it's, that it's pretty much holding itself anyway. So then put the head rail on. I'm going to make sure that it's quite close to the end but not hard up against the end so that it's pushing this away in place and then rather than just wrap this round willy nilly make sure the head rails are holding up not rolling and push downwards this bit here so that it's flat against the, the table and then stick it on like so, that bit extra I'll trim that off probably and you'll see that it's nice and square so this is the one that's machined up there just so there, the fabric folded and a machine join there I think this is probably the nicest method, the neatest okay, there we have it hope it's been useful if anybody's got any questions I'm happy to answer them <laughs>